Oh, it was, um, I mean, I, I wouldn't even say that, uh, you know, it was as important being number zero. I think it was more so for me, just a new opportunity, you know, to, to have a, a different journey. Um, I've been through a lot throughout my years. And I've only been in the league for, you know, four full seasons. So, you know, just it was just a different journey for me and a different opportunity. So I just wanted a fresh start. You're coming into a relatively young cornerback group. Uh, how excited are you to be able to come in, be that veteran, and just kind of take those guys under your wing? Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. You know, uh, I came from a, a place where we had a lot of young guys as well. So um, it's, it's different. It's a different outlook on the game. Um, you kind of been through enough to know, you know, what, what there is out there. But at the same time, you know, you have an opportunity to see more and, and be around a different experience. So um, it's a blessing. You know, I, I take every day, um, you know, one day at a time to try to get better myself. But at the same time, try to better those around me um, in any way I can. So uh, it's been a blessing in disguise, really, and just um, just excited for the opportunity just to be um, around guys like that as well. They preach a lot of versatility here. You consider yourself more of a inside guy, outside guy, man, zone. What all do you consider to be your strengths? Uh, I'm an athlete, and uh, I feel like I can honestly play any position in the secondary. I know pretty much every position in the secondary, um, and that's just how I've always been. I've, I've looked at football as just a game. I've never looked at football as uh, just knowing one thing because at the end of the day, you can be put in different situations, uh, different positions, and it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, how you look at it, at the end of the day, you have to do your job or whatever job the coach needs of you. So um, versatility in, in, in anything, in any flexion uh, of the game. You mentioned this is kind of new opportunity for you that you, that you talked about. Say so that one more time. What, what sort of is this new opportunity? How would you, you know, basically? Uh, really just being in a different atmosphere, you know, being in a different atmosphere, being around different coaches, different coaching styles, um, different atmosphere styles of just the way you, you do your day-to-day -day operations. And, uh, and I think it's just really just being – again, at, free at mind and at peace. You know, you deal with a lot of things throughout the time, whether it's injuries, um, playing time, whatever it may be for those individuals. But, um, you know, some days you, you can get down on yourself. And if you let, you know, things interrupt what you have going for yourself, it becomes difficult to live your day to day life and, and do the things that you know you set out to do for yourself. So I just really just mean it as being, you know, free mind, free spirit, and just really just put my head down and just working and grinding and knowing why I play the game. Coming into a new locker room, trying to get coaches to know you, players to know you, and, and what kind of impression you, have you tried to make right out of the game? I think I was, it's just more so being myself. You know, I show up every day ready to work. Um, if they have any questions for me, I'm, I'm free to answer them. If they have anything they want to know from the past, what I've been through, uh, how I dealt with certain situations, I'm always, you know, there to lend them advice. Um, and then actually, there's a familiar face in the locker room with Jonathan Ward, one of the running backs. I played with him in college. so. Uh, me and him always had battles, trash talking every day at college, every single day. So the first day I got in the locker room, it was already trash talk. So um, just building that relationship with guys, guys like Aziz um, that I had an opportunity with to, when I came down to um, sign my contract. We flew back actually to Tampa together. Um, and just those type of relationships and conversations, uh, they just go a long way, you know, so. Bringing that up, it seems like I heard a story at some point where you guys one of you in first class, one of you not, and you have a seat switcheroo for so you could spend more time together. Yeah, actually, that. actually, yeah. So he actually was in first class, and uh, <laughs> I should have took his seat. Actually, that's what I should have did. No, but he was in first class, and he, um, yeah, he came, said, "I'm gonna sit with you," and he pretty much asked flight attendant if he could sit there, and uh, I think she said yes. I'm not really sure. He, 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 he'd be able to tell you that. But um, yeah, and we sat there and we talked the whole flight back, and uh, I don't think we put out our phones one time, and we just talked about life. We talked about you know, the experiences that we've been through throughout the NFL. We talked about relationships we had with people and just, you know, we've dealt with similar injuries as far as um, upper body extremities. So, you know, we had things to talk about in that regard of what I can do to help mine and what he can do and stuff like that. So it's just been constant feedback, but it's been more of a um, a relationship built. You know, I feel like he's a brother and I haven't even played with him yet or been around him enough yet. So um, it's, it's, it's just real, you know, it's real, so. Can you describe Chris Harris and, and what kind of his style is like? How it's similar or different than what you've been used to? Yeah, he's he's an enthusiast. You know, he he wants you to be great. He doesn't really care how how it gets done, but he just expects uh, the utmost effort from you. Um, fun is number one for him, especially. He just wants you to be able to enjoy the game. Like I said, be able to enjoy why you play and know why you play. Um, you're gonna make mistakes, you know, and and that comes with the game and that comes with just reps. Um, but at the end of the day, you just he just wants you to to know that you gotta go hard. You know, you gotta go hard for what you want. Um, and I think that his coaching style is, is similar to what I've been around, but it's, it's different in ways. Just like I said, being around younger guys again, it's just they 
preach and harp more on, you know, your day to day things and what you're doing to take care of yourself, what you're doing to be a pro and how you can become a pro faster and better. So, yes, mean, sir. You had some joint practices against this team. Yeah. How much did that help you in your decision to come here? What you, what you learned about the organization through those days? Uh, if I'm being honest with you, you know, when we had those joint practices, I wasn't really thinking about, you know, what could come of next year or what things would be um, here playing here. I was really just thinking about how I can be a better version of myself. Um, but as far as the team structure went, you know, they, they practiced very hard. They went balls to wall every rep. And so it obviously it's something that leaves a mark on you when you're like, okay, this is what they're being taught. And then when I come in and I meet with them and I see, you know, how Braves is going about talking about things and finishing with violence and effort and speed, I can remember, you know, how they were during those practices. So we're talking about being a veteran and coming in and trying to influence younger guys, but there are some guys who've been here. What's it like fitting in with guys like Fulton and Farley and Molden, some of those guys that have been around for a couple of years? Yeah, I mean, you're going to fit in wherever you are. And I think that's just the type of person I am where I can kind of, you know, feel around and feel how guys are. It's just mainly for me. Um, just learning the terminology, being on the same page, and just you know getting the best out of myself as long as getting the best out of everybody else. Just pushing each other every day, um, knowing that it's a competition within us, but as well as we're all working for the same goal, and um, we're all playing for for that same fight. So every day you just show up with that mentality of getting better and getting those around you better. What was the frustration level last year, Sean? I know that that quad injury kind of seemed to yeah. nag you a little bit, and, and what can you do to sort of prevent it? Maybe from in the future. Yeah, um, you know, a lot of that probably was my fault, you know, just not being, I guess, on top of things more so. Um, my playing time was cut down during the year, um, and that could be a reason why, you know, once it increased, my workload increased, injuries happened. I, I'm not sure, and I don't have any excuses for it, but um, just for myself, man, just staying on top of everything, staying on top of my body, being a pro every day, uh, taking care of the things I need to take care of every day, hydrating every day, and that's things that should come second nature to you as an athlete, but making sure that I stay on top of it no matter what, even on those days, you know, I don't do anything, so. What's it been like getting to know Rabel? You knew kind of the type of coach he was in the NFL. It's mm -hmm. hard to, to ignore that, but yeah. what's it been like actually being able to, to practice under him right now and get to know him? Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've enjoyed it. You know, we come out here, we work hard every day. We do a lot of things that other teams in the league aren't doing at this time. Uh, we're pushing sleds on Mondays. We're pushing, <laughs> we're doing things that's different, you know, but. At the end of the day, you know, it's enjoyable. You know, you come out here and it feels like you're working for something. You know, it doesn't feel like you're just coming to a nine to five or coming to a job where you just show up, you get your work and you leave. It's like you want to be around, you want to be here. Um, and you just want to work. You want to grind with the guys that are here with you because you know they're going through the same thing. So I enjoy it. You know, I do. Um, wake up every day with a smile on my face. I get up early, 5.30 a.m. I got alarms. I don't always get up at 5.30, but, but I open... No, now nah, I drank one time, one time coffee actually the first day here, um, just so I can try out the new coffee maker because it was it was pretty cool. But yeah, I mean I just I wake up early, I don't really move, I just see my alarm, turn it off, and then I get up when you know it's necessary, and then I go about my day. But I enjoy you know coming to work every day. You know those there's days where you complain, obviously, but it's it's a more of a fun complaint than anything because everybody's going through it with you. So when you look, um, when you look back at that that second year of yours and the great playoff run too. What are, what are some of the memories that, that come back to you uh, for that year and how that helped you through your career? Um, you mean like some of the positive memories or some of the negative, some of the positive memories? Um, that year, you know, that year was a, a, a fun year as well. You know, we started that year off. I don't even know if we were, when we played, I remember playing the Chiefs earlier in the year and they, they whooped us. Um, and then we had a break right after that. And then after that break, we came back and it was like, uh, we knew we needed to get our act together. It was more of a want to thing, not a have to thing. I think guys wanted to be the best. We wanted to win, we wanted to go far. Um, we played with Tom, so we wanted to have that legacy on our backs as well. So it was just really just taking it one day at a time, grinding with it one day at a time. But our secondary was so close knit that no, no matter what happened, nothing really could break us. And we were kind of, we know we were fighting a lot of adversity with teams and people just counting us out and counting us down. So we really wanted to leave a mark and just make our make our names, you know, for each, for each other and our families. Is that a culture that you feel like you can nurture within a group or does it have to be like natural for each and every guy as an individual for the collective to kind of have that mentality? As far as mentality, as far as but like just like that winning mentality like yeah. to be you've seen, obviously, what it takes for postseason success, and right. building around time to be great. So like right. that kind of approach. Yeah, I think I think it's it's a mentality. Obviously, it's something that you can adapt to, you know, if you're that type of person. But I think it, it comes from within at, at the end of the day. 
Um, and then it's those that are around you that can attract more of that mentality and you can bring more guys with you to, to join and, and feel that same energy you're feeling. Um, and they have that here. You know, every guy here, every guy I talk to wants to be better. They want to work. They want to grind. So um, it's easy, I guess, to communicate and to bring guys with you on the same page when we're out there running. Like we're doing stuff that's not easy. You know what I mean? Like there's days where I would train last year and the year before where it's like, oh, that wasn't bad, you know, but every day you come here is is work <laughs> every day. So like it's and like Aziz says it all the time where he's like, you know, that was hard, but we got through it. And as a team, you get through things like that. And, and then when you deal with adversity as a team, it builds more character, it builds more people that want to work for each other, want to work for the team, want to work for that goal. So on Monday is there something else that's been that was a that was a curveball that was a curveball I, I woke up on that Monday thinking that I was I was in for a nice speed day mm -hmm. and he he asked if the if the turf was wet and then I kind of had an idea of what he was going to say next and then he said what he thought he was going to say then it was a curveball but I'm sorry what, what was your question was there another curveball other than the sleds that that you guys have looked at each other and said wow that that was hard <laughs> oh every day Every day is hard. <laughs> Every day is hard, but it's like it's it's a good hard, you know. It's like a, it's like you just come to work and when you're done, you know you did what you were supposed to do. Like you know you got a good work in, and then anything you do after that is obviously what you need to work on and things you need to refine. Whether it's cold toe, whether it's stand on the field extra, but um, it's like you you get the work in, and it's like I feel I, I'm hurting, but I feel good, you know. So one of those. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Sean. All right, kind of put it. Uh, in the best perspective, it's just, it's different. It's different than anything I've done. Um, I can't even really compare it to college, um, but I feel like maybe in the sense of like just the workload, it kind of reminds you a little bit of how you are like as a freshman coming into college and you're like, what the hell is going on? You know, they got you doing 5 a.m. workouts. You know, this is in college, obviously, but it's just like things that usually you get to the pros and it's a lot more like, hey, man, we're going to make sure we keep you healthy, you know, strength staff and stuff like that. Their biggest thing is like, you know, the head coach gave the strength staff the keys to the car. Don't crash the car. Like, make sure the car makes it. So, you know, I, and I, I know I understand that because you're dealing with guys, you know, even, you you know, Sean just talked about playing with Tom Brady. He's old enough, you know, to be some people's dad. So it's like you have to adjust. But I know, like, we're doing the sleds, and I'm seeing Ryan, you know, who's 35, 36, whatever he is now, you know, he's played 12 years in his league and he's doing the same thing I'm doing, falling out on the floor, everything. I'm like, I'm seeing him come back in the locker room. I'm like, Ryan, I know you weren't doing what we were just doing. I'm like, yeah. So, I mean, it's just like a different mentality. And then, you know, you just understand how it can translate. And you're like, okay, dang, like I remember playing uh, in 2021 when we came here when I was in San Francisco on a Thursday night. Half the roster was, was down. Like, I mean, they don't think they had any office alignment. The very last office alignment on the team was up, who was from practice squad. And they still came in and beat, and we came here and they, and they had beat us. And you're just like, how? Like, well, this is how. Now I'm seeing it, being on the other side of it, uh, you get to experience like all the work that was put in to get to those Sundays, so. We asked you, it was the first time we talked to you, I guess since you signed. Yeah. What were the first six weeks as a Titan been as far as getting to know teammates, coaches, uh, and learning that culture you just talked about? Oh um, man, it's just been like a learning experience every day, just, Coming in, like I said, similar to what Sean just talked about, he kind of made it a little bit easier on me. Uh, just being yourself, like I can only be me. I can't try to be somebody I'm not. Um, and just really trying to get a feel for everybody, the guys around you, uh, just talking to the guys, introducing yourself. When you sit in the locker room, sometimes I'd be in the locker room, me and Sean be sitting there talking for however long. Me and some of the other guys sit there and just chop it up because you don't really know, you know the people that you're working with every day. But as you go through all these experiences together and you get all this meeting time. You're just trying to figure out people's personalities, you know, people's coaching styles, players like learning styles, because you try to meet them where they're at. You know, I feel like a good leader, um, you try to be able to to lead in different ways and you can touch guys differently. Some guys you might need to get on them. Another guy, he might need you to just go and pull them to the side, talk to them. Somebody else might be something else. So, you know, just trying to, I guess, get a feel for how people are and then meet them where they are. Oh, you know, well, I had a conversation with Rand and I pretty much just told him, like, if I come here, don't draft nobody. I'm just like, <laughs> 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 no, I'm joking. I mean, honestly, um, yeah, I think that's just a, a reflection of how, you know, 
the whole front office and the coaches and everybody feels about what we have here. Uh, you know, I know they brought in a, a couple uh, guys from the tryouts and stuff and signed uh, some free agents uh, or undrafted free agents. You know, I was undrafted too. So I don't think that that, um, you know, just because you weren't drafted really means anything. You can be, you can make a career whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, I think that if it was more of a necessity for them, obviously they would have addressed it a different way. When you're undrafted like you were coming into the league and guys like that, though, do you carry that chip the rest of your career even though you've now established yourself as an NFL player? I think um, being undrafted, it allowed me to take a different a different process, a different sense of urgency, you know, because when you're undrafted, you know, the, the leash is a lot shorter, you know, so it's like – you're gonna deal with you're gonna they're gonna deal with me making mistakes and doing stuff like that, but you almost gotta be like a vet right out the gate. Like, you know, now you get the least amount of practice time, you get the least amount of reps, but you gotta do the most and you're expected to know everything when you get in. You know, I think some of the hardest jobs in the NFL is being the backup in the NFL. Cause you don't get any reps and when you go in there, you better not mess it up. It's just like I told you about the car. You know, you get the keys to the car, better not crash my car. So I think, you know, and being undrafted coming in, I remember uh, Quan Alexander, that year I came in, he came in the same year with me. And he's like a big brother to me. And we had two our ACLs the same, literally a week apart from each other. Um, and then uh, coming in together, we rehabbed, did everything together. First day of training camp, obviously Quan had just signed like a $56 million contract. I see his name on the board, they show the depth chart. He's the first linebacker on the depth chart, obviously. And then I look at my name and Z so shy. We got 10 linebackers and I was the 10th guy on the depth chart. So it was just like perspective. You felt like a walk on in college. That's the that's the closest thing I can explain to anybody what it feels like being undrafted. And if anybody was a walk on in college, you know what I'm saying. So. Can you tell your version of the, of the plane ride story? Sean was saying that you were in first class. He was in coach. You gave up your seat so you could sit, sit maybe in the back of the plane and kind of get to know him a little bit. Can you kind of talk through your version of that story? Yeah, so I know it sounds a little bougie. It sounds like I promise you I did not pay for that flight. That was per the Titans. The only reason why Sean wasn't in first class was because he signed a little later, so they had to find him a, a flight last minute. Otherwise, he probably would have been sitting right next to me. So, um, honestly, like, just instantly when I remember we were going to dinner and I talked to um, Rand when I had signed, and he told me, hey, we got Sean Murphy Bunting. Like, he's coming. He's on his way right now, blah, blah, blah. You'll see him at dinner. And I'm like, oh, damn. Like, obviously, I already know who he is. You know, I'm from Tampa, so – the Bucks has always been, you know, a team on my mind. I, I keep up with, pay attention. Sometimes it's like, you know, it's just, it's a hometown. So you always gonna keep up with it. So, I mean, for me, he's a, a phenomenal player. Like seeing how his playmaking ability, you know, how he can cover, like things he does, like, you know, so I was excited obviously. And then I remember uh, we had a van pick us up to take us all to dinner uh, with the coaches that, that later on that day. And I had got on the bus and I had sat next to him and, Instantly, like, you would have thought, like like you said, like he's been my brother, like we knew each other for the last four years. Uh, and I think from the time we started talking, we didn't stop talking until the end of that flight <laughs> when he went home and I even got to meet his mom, which was kind of cool. So uh, I think you just, you can meet like real genuine people. You can feel that energy. And that's what I felt from Sean uh, right off the bat. And, you know, I think, you know, there's a lot of players who are good players, but then you meet them in person, you're like, yeah, you know, but I think, like that was a purest reflection of the player and then the person, like it meshed up perfectly. So. How much did that, did that Rand connection play a part in your relationship with him and you know, maybe choosing here eventually? Um, I think it, it definitely played a, a, a role for me because it was something that was familiar, you know, and uh, obviously, you know, him being the GM, him, you know, kind of seeing the direction of where he's trying to go, what he's trying to do, you know, we were both in the same place under the same, you know, uh, structure, so you already know what the vision is. And me and Rand had our own relationship prior to him being here when we were in San Francisco, you know, watching film together. He would talk crap to me after every single game. You know, I know his kids, I know his wife. Um, so it, it was cool to see him, you know, even get the get the job, get the opportunity uh, to be the GM. And, you know, just even now him walking around and stuff, like, you know, sometimes I just look at it, I just start laughing at him just because it's like, you know, you feel like it's somebody, like your uncle or somebody just, you know, run off with the money. It's just like, dang, like, like that's the equivalent of, you know, me like signing a $50 million contract, essentially, you know, like uh, being a GM, I'm sure is what a lot of scouts, you know, working their way up want to do. So to see him, you know, living that out, you know, and to be a part of that growth, you know, I, you know, you all, you want to make it work for sure. So. You see, you touched on this a little bit earlier, but since Brable came here, this team has been really good as an underdog. Yeah. Do, do you see why now? Oh yeah. I mean, like I just told you, like Sean just told you, Anybody else who comes here who's never been here uh, 
when you when you start working with this team, I mean, I should have got the hit because I'm looking. You know, they got signs on the walls, and there's a sign on the wall that it was talking about like expectations or something like that. And in the expectations, you see conditioning on one of them, and you just like, oh, it looks good, but you don't. That's real. Like <laughs> conditioning is literally like we're doing a lot. You know what I'm saying? And you think like, man, this is crazy. This is crazy. And it's like you just gotta buy in and, and see the vision, you know, because obviously it's like it's been successful for a reason. And then you you just gotta trust it and go with it. And as I've gone with it the last six weeks, like I've seen growth in myself. I've seen growth physically in myself where, you know, I feel the best physical shape I felt in a long, long time. And you think, oh man, I'm doing so much. Like, how? But like all that work is just like coach likes to say, is building a callus and not a blister. So Traylon had a hard time last year as a rookie coming coming through. With, with some of this conditioning stuff and, and being ready and the like. He talked about being here throughout. I'm just wondering if you've noticed him much or had a first impression of him. Uh, so I got to talk to Traylon um, because Dre Greenlaw, who's like my best friend, obviously played with him in San Francisco. Uh, he had told me about Traylon. They played together in college. And uh, he just told me like, hey man, check in with him, look, out, look after him and stuff like that. So I chopped it up with him and got to, you know, just kind of get a feel for like how it, how his first year went for him. Just, you know, get to learn him, get to know him. Um, he sounds like a really good kid, you know, has his mind on the right place, uh, head on straight. But I think um, a lot of it, you know, even I think when you guys asked Sean about, you know, like how you build a certain chemistry, a certain mentality, you know, you brought that up. And a lot of it, um, I feel like you, you have in you to want to be great, but people don't always have direction. That's why you have leadership. That's why you have coaches. That's why you have general managers. That's why you have leaders on the team, captains, because there's a lot of people who, who want to do something, but if you, you don't know what you don't know. So I think the biggest thing uh, for him is that's really good is having a year under your belt because your first year in the NFL is you think you're the crap and you think you got it all figured out. Then you get in there and you realize, damn, like, you know, it's a lot harder than I thought. And as you go through that process, you go through that year, that next year you're like, oh, I just know I'm going to kill it. I know this is it because you, you have better experience. And, you know, I think as he continues to grow through that, he's going to be a way better player. Obviously, I'm going to try to share as much knowledge as I have uh, to help him. But as far as, like, seeing him on the field-wise, we don't really get to do that now because we're, you know, we're not competing with each other. But next week, I think it starts. So, you know, I could give you a little update. <laughs> When you heard the league was going to let linebackers wear single-digit numbers, and did you ever think you'd be able to get back in the in the number two? And how happy are you about that? Um, I mean, when they brought it up, it was cool at first. I think they, I think it was what last year that they talked about it, um, and I could have did it then. But you know, I, uh, I was wearing fifty-one. You know, that twenty twenty uh, two season last year, my mom's birthday. It was a fifty-first birthday for me. It was my jersey number. It was my uncle who passed away from COVID uh, that that prior summer. That was his uh, football number. So it, it was something special to me. Um, but also, you know, coming here uh, with a new opportunity, kind of like Sean talked about. You know, I know obviously David Long was here for the last four years. We came in uh, into the league the same year, um, and he you know he made that number what it was. And you know, I'm not I'm not David Long. You know, I'm a Zell Shire. So I think the biggest thing for me was just being myself. And you know, that, that number two that I had was my college number. Uh, back at Florida Atlantic, so it just kind of gave me a new, a new energy, a new vibe, a new feel. So you know. By the way, did Ryan do that? Oh, he did. And um, just bond, make a connection with the coaches, but also just you know get on, get ahead on the things that I know that I'm going to be doing in um, the off season. So um, now it's just like I've already did it past couple months, it's not new to me, so. What's the challenge, Traylon? I mean, you learned on offense last year as year long. Now all of a sudden, you got a, you got a new scheme to learn as well. It's a, a, you know, is that a bit of a challenge that you're um, That's where it goes back to me just being here throughout the whole off season and not going nowhere. So I was able to just meet with the quarterbacks, um, meet with Tim, Coach Rob, Brable, and uh, just get ahead on things. And that's what I wanted to do. And so it's I'm at a good, good Stayed at it. Um, I'm on a good pace with learning it, and um, it's just it's fun. How far along are you with the terminology, and how much of the terminology has changed? Um, I would just say I'm up to date to every install that we install. You know, um, um, and it really hadn't. I wouldn't say it changed much, but you know, um, y'all can ask very with that. So that part of it. Things different for you as far as wanting to send the, last year. Your rookie trying to look at Robert Woods and, and Nick Westbrook, Akina. Things different for you this year as far as wanting the young guys to kind of follow your lead and, and set an example? I would him. just say me being the person that I am, 
just helping them not make the mistakes that I made, um, especially coming into camp. Um, and just, you know, just being there for him because I know how it is being a rookie, um, you know, and just helping them out any way that I can. So. And looking back, I mean, how hard was that last year? Everything um, you went through? I would say it's, I mean, every rookie would tell you that it's hard. Um, but it, you just got to, you know, you got to find your way. And once you find that way, um, you know, just stay consistent and just keep getting better and better. Is your goal to establish yourself as wide receiver <laughs> one on this roster? No, sir. Um, I would just say my goal is to make plays for the team, be where I'm supposed to be, and um, be a great teammate. It's hard to imagine you not being double consistently the way things are right now. I, I, I don't imagine you want that, but but knowing that that's coming, how uh, much of a challenge? Um, man, I would just say that's why I got teammates. Because uh, if I'm double, then there's somebody else wide open. So. Uh, we just go out there and play Titan football. The team hasn't done much in the draft or free agency to, to add to the room. How much pressure does that put on you? I mean, that feels like the whole spotlight's um, Honestly, it doesn't put any pressure on me. Um, like I said, that's a that's a question for Braves. And um, I would just say, man, we just know in the wide out room that we're going to play who's ever in the room. Um, and everybody knows to you know, play, play their hardest, play for the team. So. That's what we're going to do. You mentioned that this was like your sophomore year, the tempo of the offense. How much carryover from last year is there to what you guys are doing right now? Um, I would just say, man, that's a question for Braves. Um, but I would just say, man, just playing fast is the main thing. Just play fast, be physical, um, and be versatile. You talked about getting to know your or coaches a little bit more in this off season, specifically Tim Kelly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what have you learned about him? Um, man, he was a great guy. I would just say last year, he was one of the ones that mentored me, um, helping me learn the um, offense last year. And um, just him being those he now just makes it even better because we already had that connection. And so um, when it's something new, he's always on top of me, making sure that I got every detail that I need to know about the full concept of the play. And, um, you know, he does a great job with explaining and uh, just making sure he gets his point across. You mentioned your breathing. How, how much calibrating the, the asthma and the weather and all of that last year, I imagine it was much more difficult than you expected. How much have you kind of figured out everything now? And, um, um, I would just say uh, that's why I've been here, um, just making sure that I'm running in the heat. Um, when I do get that feeling, um, you know, I know how to control it now, just being here with Todd and running with him out there or running with the strength coaches. Uh, Frank doing a good job of, you know, managing what I'm doing and not overdoing something. So it just it just all goes back to me being here throughout the whole offseason and getting that under control. Did you change your diet or, and, and training and all that this offseason? Um, yes. Uh, I honestly would say I started training my diet around – midway through the season last year, um, and it helped um, with me being able to stay on the field longer. And, um, you know, when I get when I would just say it eliminates me from making uh, mistakes when I'm tired and um, really just being a great football player and um, just being a being a Titan. <laughs> as far as size, weight, all that, anything different for you this year compared to last? Is if you feel faster? Uh, I would say I feel faster because I can breathe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, soft tissue instruction. I you say you've been here the whole time, but but has there been any kind of change of approach broadly or for you on on how to prepare yourself to avoid soft tissue stuff? No, sir. I would just say um, the main thing is being healthy. Um, so being able to practice, um, being out there running sprints that helps eliminate me from, well, all athletes from making, from hurting hamstrings or tearing something. Um, so just being able to practice is the main thing. And, you know, that's what I've been doing, so. What is it about that so second long. year that allows guys to make that big of a jump, <laughs> you think? Um, I would just speak for myself, honestly. Um, it just gives you confidence because you've already been in it. You know, I got thrown into the fire and, um, you know, I like being thrown into the fire, honestly, because it just makes you decide of who you are, what kind of player you're going to be in. Um, it just makes it easier on me now because I can just concentrate on the things that I know that can make me better and not worry about the stuff in the past. Just being the hogs this offseason, is that a thing in the past? 
I would say I still hunted <laughs> <laughs> this past off season. But um successfully? Yeah. Yeah. Did you cross did you cross paths with Levis much leading up to him being picked here? And I mean what's the first two days been like with him? Um so actually I've never met him until when they got here uh Monday. Well, yesterday. Um and but he's a he seems like a great kid. Um, you know, he can throw the ball. Um, you know, and you can tell that he's in tune with what um, the coaches are trying to teach him. And, um, you know, he can just keep getting better and better. Thanks, Trey. Yes, Thanks, sir. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks. For the first six weeks, when we talked to you, I guess the day you signed, what have the first six weeks of the Titan uh, been like as far as learning teammates, kind of learning the culture here? It's been awesome. It's been awesome to get uh, get to know the culture. Um, I mean, Rave's got the guys going. I mean, he's always asking questions, making sure everybody's on point. Um, so that's awesome to see, especially like – it kind of gets you in those situations like in games where you're kind of on the spot and you got to think fast kind of thing. And so um, it kind of – in OTAs, it's hard to replicate those things and we're kind of getting that feel right now of what a game feel is like because you got to, you know, you got to think quick on the spot. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then also, like, I mean, we're just getting after it on the field. Uh, we're getting a, um, a bunch of conditioning in, like Aziz said, and then uh, we got some sleds going and that's always fun. We got some team sled relay races. So uh, guys are getting after it. It's a lot of fun. Has, it, has he gotten you on a question you know the answer to? Or have you seen somebody that's been stumped and how uncomfortable is that? Yeah, and I mean, it's in the team meeting, so it's in front of everybody. So it's definitely, uh, it gets uncomfortable a couple times, but I mean, everybody's got each other's back. So you'll hear some guys whispering the answers to, to a couple guys or, you know, we're always uh, trying to get each other's back. And then, uh, you know, there's a few times where a guy might get stumped, but it's it, the point isn't to stump guys. The point is just to see if guys are on their stuff. And then, okay, if he doesn't, know what to do what can a coach do to help him get better it's not one of those things like oh you're wrong like you know that sucks like get better it's it's one of those things where it's like oh you don't know what this is what can we do to help to make sure that you know for the next time and so that's kind of more the point of it with the mm -hmm. three guys you heard a little bit there from Aziz, how far beyond what you're used to is what you guys are doing at this stage of the year? I mean, every team has a different philosophy. Um, some teams, you know, they like to keep, you know, make sure guys aren't getting injured. They're kind of just doing enough to like where guys, you know, are in shape and able to do the things that they can. And then, they, you know, there's some teams, um, I mean, Vrabel's got, you heard Aziz talk about callus. I mean, there's definitely a philosophy of, you know, sometimes doing not enough just stay healthy is good to a certain point but then you start get going and then you see injuries happen that way um there's there's another philosophy where you know you work super hard and you kind of build that callus so then you know those things don't hurt as bad and then you know you don't get those same injuries that you would because you weren't doing enough kind of thing so i mean at the end of the day it's just different philosophies um i mean i think either either of them really work it's just kind of the point where it's like um what is the team doing? And this team is a, a run the ball team, um, a play hard defense team. And then, you know, we're going to take our shots down the field. We got playmakers at the receiver position that if we can get them in some space um, and use the run game to do that a little bit, we can make big plays. So, I mean, this is more of a team that probably needs that callus because, you know, we're going to be playing grinded out football. And then, you know, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, tough football rather than, you know, we're spreading it out and, you know, guys are kind of getting a little bit more finesse-like. So I think with the team that we are, it's a really good thing to have the conditioning and have that callus to be able to go longer than the other team. With that conditioning, with that conditioning you know, you, you hear some of the other guys, they, they talk about tempo and speed in this offense. How much have you kind of seen that? What's your take on how those two are, are relate to each other? Yeah, I mean, I came from an offense that, that had that wide zone mentality, that outside zone. And so it was everything speed off the ball. Everything is, you know, how fast can we get into the defense? No false steps. We're not trying to go backwards. You know, we're trying to get the ball moving, go forwards. Um, so um, that transition has been a little bit easier for me because I come from a scheme that's like that. Um, so it, it, it's something that I'm kind of used to. So I really enjoy that to be able to, to use that speed to, I mean, we have a little bit lighter guys in the O-line and we're trying to get speed off the ball. We're trying to get guys moving and get that defense thinking. So that way, you know, when we start hitting misdirection plays or things, we can get really big explosive plays that way. And so that's, that's one of the, one of my favorite things. And so the conditioning and everything helps with that and just kind of helps us work our tempo. And every time we do a conditioning, we're doing it on Matt's, or, um, sorry, uh, Ryan's cadence. So it's like,
when we start doing that, it's, uh, you know, we're, we're practicing getting off the ball. We're practicing how fast can your first step be. And like one of our big things is being violent. And it's not just violent, you know, we're just trying to beat up the other, you know, beat up the other guy, get penalties. It's not that type of violent. It's like how explosive can we be with our first step? How fast can we be? That's kind of our violence when we do. He's like getting off the ball, the more violent first step you have, that's what we're trying to do. O-line is just usually about guys, the tightest group in the room. You guys are basically been rebuilt, <laughs> guys like yourself coming in from elsewhere, rookies, a couple of holdovers. How's that camaraderie being built right now? It's awesome. I mean, at the end of the day, we got you got the whole playbook in right now, and you got a bunch of new guys. Um, you got some guys that have been here, but they're also you know new to some of the things that we're doing um, because it is a similar offense. But then we're also making some changes, so you know it's it's new to everybody. So it's like, what can we all do as a group to work together, make sure we're all on the same page, and go out there and you know execute our plays, and then also like we said, get off the ball fast. So, you know, it's a, it's a great thing, and, and that's one of the best parts of the O-line is the more we can communicate with each other, the more we know each other and understand what this guy means when he says this or like, hey, we got this type of block. What, do, what, am, what am I expecting this guy to do? So, if uh, I mean, if you're lining up, if you have a right guard and a right tackle and they're going to make a – what is the right guard going to do to set up this block so the right tackle can knock him over? And being used to those guys, like, out there, it, it really helps having that uh, camaraderie and just – that communication and right now with the rookies getting in there they're getting a taste of it and you can tell they're you know they got the whole playbook in and you know this is probably the toughest time as a rookie and then when camp comes around they start getting a more of a feel for it but um just what we can do to help those guys you know come along understand what we're saying um when we say like a certain code word when we're saying a word to communicate with each other so that we're on the same page so it's just kind of all those things coming together and it, it's a great time of year for that and the guys are doing a really good job with it being rebuilt like that, how do leaders emerge and who emerges as leaders? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's uh, – I mean, you'll see some guys that are, are veterans. They, they kind of emerge because of, like, how they've played. they played in, like, you know, systems like this before or they kind of, you know, been a, up against certain defense to be able to help those guys. And then you'll see just young guys, you know, their, you know, commitment to get to the ball, their commitment to, you know, uh, finish, you know, getting all those things. So you'll see guys like leaders that way come in so it, it's kind of like a just a mix of things of guys bring in you know what they can do to help people learn and then also what guys can do just by just doing their actions out there you see a guy finish to the ball you're like okay you know i got to catch up to that guy and so you, you see it all over the place you see guys in the weight room you know they're pushing weights um i mean roos he's one of the strongest guys on the team he's always pushing guys in the weight room so it's like you know you see guys like that and you, you know you want to be like that guy you want to you know that's the guy that's right now the strongest what can I do to be up by him? So then I think leadership was just kind of every guy has a certain part of leadership in the group. There's not a single guy. There's just not like a group of guys that are just leaders. I think everybody can have something to do. I mean, you got young guys that are just out there trying to grab a bag and get on, you know, scout team. You know, that's kind of a leader to me because, you know, he's stepping up. He's not nobody has to tell him what to do. He's going to do something. So you, know, you want to be a guy that always is doing that. And so we got leaders all over the place. And I think those guys are definitely stepping up. Interaction been, what's your interaction been with, with uh, Skoronsky early on? What do you think he brings to this team? Um, you know, I, I've got to see him the last couple of days, so uh, I think he, he's a great guy. Um, I'm excited to see him play, and, and he seems like a smart guy. He's definitely coming in. He, you know, he, he knows a couple things, and it's like I said, it's tough for those guys this time of year, and for him to come in and, and you know what he's doing a little bit, it, it's awesome to see that, and I'm just excited to keep going. Uh, I, I'm excited to see what he does in the future because I think he, he's definitely a guy that can be really good for us. Played a lot of positions, been very versatile. Speaking of that, Skronsky looks like he's maybe trying to learn a couple spots. Have you given him any advice in that uh, respect on you know what, what it might take to, to, to learn a couple spots? Yeah, no, I haven't gotten to talk to him uh, yet on that a little bit, but um, I mean. At this time of year, you don't want to do too much of like, you know, tell them, tell them, because I mean, they got a lot on their plate. They got, you know, the playbooks in and everything. So you're not trying to get in those young guys' head. Let them get kind of a feel for it. Let the coaches, you know, do their job and, and get those guys going. And then once they start getting a feel for it, you can, you know, help them in that way. But uh, sometimes it's like you don't want to pile too much on them right now. So you don't want to tell them all this stuff. He's thinking about one other thing, you know, and it's kind of in one ear without the other. So like, you know, as it gets along and he starts getting a feel for it and you can tell, like, then you can, like, step in and, you know, give him a little bit help there and there and, and try to help those guys that way.
But uh, right now, just kind of just letting him do his thing and then letting him learn as he goes. And then when he needs help or, you know, I see something right away, I can, you know, then I can step in. But I don't want to, you know, just come at him right now and just get all those, you know, just add more things to his plate to learn. So that's a little tough for those guys right now. I've been in that situation. So right now it's just kind of, hey, how, how can I help you learn some of the things that you need for just the playbook? And then once he gets that feel, then we can start getting into the, you know, game plan, those type of things. Talk about building the confidence of this offensive line. It goes beyond the field, right? I mean, do you guys do anything or have you started to do anything outside of the locker room? I know in the past dinners and yeah. things like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we, we, uh, it was a couple of weeks ago, we went and got burgers all together. Um, we're going to go do some uh, team stuff, at, you know, in the next few days. Um, so, I mean, we, we're definitely getting together. It's definitely a camaraderie um, off the field as, as well as on the field. So it's just as close as we can, as close as we can, you know, get to knowing everybody, knowing exactly what, how, like, people say things. It's, it's kind of just – it helps you because, like, when you know exactly what a guy means, like, he can say something that means nothing about the offense. Nobody has any clue of what we're saying. But you know what he's – because you've been with that guy for a long time. Those things help, and I think it's just – uh, building that chemistry on and off the field is definitely a big thing. Uh, working with Haas to this point, what has that been like and what has maybe stood out to you about kind of how he, how he coaches you guys? Uh, it's been great. I mean, Haas, he's been here for a few years, so um, it, it's awesome to see him. He, he's definitely um, been helping the guys engage and everything. Um, I think the biggest thing is, you know, like, as we're changing things on the offense, he's definitely bringing us together. He's like, he's calming the guys down. Like, hey, I know, like, you know, everybody's got a lot of things going right now. We got a lot of things coming in. He's doing a great job of that um, to keeping everybody, hey, like, we're going to get it as it comes. Like, right now, yeah, it might be a lot, but as time goes, we're just going to keep getting better and better and better. And so, what can we focus on right now that's like the most important right now that's finishing? making sure we can get to the ball and stuff like that. And then as it goes, we'll learn, you know, keep getting these plays stacked in. And then, you know, if we make a mistake, okay, what can we do to make that better? What what do you need? Like I said earlier, like part of the team meeting, it's not just like, hey, you're wrong. It's like, okay, what did you do wrong? Why did you think that? And what can we do to make sure that you can get on the right page for the next play? And so it's kind of those things. And Haas is doing a great job of that. Did he say anything at the start about him being new and and – his learning process or anything like that, or he's just plugging and going? Um, yeah, no, I mean, he, he definitely uh, said at the start, but I mean, I think one of the cool things about Haas, I mean, he came, he was like a head coach um, at the, the smaller college level. So, I mean, he's used to commanding the room. He's used to being able to, to be that head guy. And so I think that's been like an easy transition for him. So it's like, you don't really feel that like, you know, oh, it's his first time as a line coach kind of thing, as or as the head guy. I mean, he's definitely got good command of the room, um, and he's definitely coming in and, and doing a great job with us. And, and I, th I think we've all learned a lot from him, and we're just going to continually build as a, as a group. Is that uh, coach mentality, like that collaborative sort of environment, new to you, or is that something you've seen used and like successful in the past, or kind of different now that you're in Tennessee? Um, I think it's at the NFL, you see it a lot more just because, I mean, everybody's a grown man. Like you, you'll see that, um, not every place does it. Um, I've been used to it. I mean, I, when I came from San Fran, uh, first or we, I mean, we communicated a lot. We did a great job. That's one thing he really encouraged. He really wanted to hear guys. Um, okay. Why'd you do this? Like, I want to know why I don't really care if you're right or wrong. I just want to know what's going through your head kind of thing. And Haas is doing a great job of that too. Is like, okay, what is this? Okay, and then, like, is instincts better here? Like, are you picking up, like, you know, a blitzer that's more important? Or is it like, okay, hey, we got to shift this. Like, we got to, you know, we need to block this guy um, because we have, a you know, a guy rapping or something like that kind of thing. So um, he's doing a great job with that, and I, and I think that's one of the best things about the NFL and being able to do that because you, you get a really good collaboration and also just builds that chemistry that we've all been talking about. Because it's not just, you know, players on the field, it's also coaches. And so the more you can build a chemistry with those guys and they can trust you, you know, if you say like you're seeing something out there that they can't see from the sideline or from the box, I think that really helps because, you know, there, there's sometimes where, you know, things are going on that, you know, they don't really get to see because, you know, they got to go fast too. There's a play clock and everything. So, um, so it's kind of nice to be able to have that, you know, communication. 
one more. What Ryan and Traylon talked a little bit about the, just the up-tempo install that Tim has added. From an offensive lineman perspective, what's that like? Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's just kind of like just knowing the plays and being able to think fast kind of thing. You're using like a bunch of code words and stuff for that up-tempo stuff. So, you know, it's just more stuff to learn and be able to, okay, when you hear this word, can you think instantly what the play is and then instantly know, okay, which defense am I going against? What do I have to call for blocking kind of thing like that? So being able to have that, um, you know, just kind of like that recognition to be able to hear, I heard something, okay, I know what play we're doing. If I get this defense, this is what I'm doing. If we get this defense, this is what we're doing. So, I mean, there's a lot of things because, I mean, at the end of the day, you can have a play. There's 20 different defenses to block it against, you know, because that changes your job on every single defense. And so there's there's a bunch of things that go into that. So being able to hear that and then go to the line and do it on that up tempo gives you a tremendous advantage. And then on top of that, you know, with them being tired and you able to be able to think still while they're tired or while you're tired, that's a huge thing because, I mean, if we can get into a great play against a defense that is not equipped to, you know, go against that play, that's one of the biggest things, and that's why you do it. And so uh, the more we can just continually just be on top of that would be great.